uh, Wednesday, November 15th, 1882. So we're pretty early on in the gospel. M is just starting to get to know Sri Ramakrishna. He's just starting to know some of the other disciples. Some of the other disciples haven't even come yet. So we're just, it's kind of like the scene is opening in, the, in this great play. So Sri Ramakrishna, accompanied by Rock Hall and several other devotees, came to Calcutta in a carriage and called for M at the school where he was teaching. Then they all set out for the Maidan. Shema Krishna wanted to see the Wilson Circus. As the carriage rolled along the crowded Chitpur Road, his joy was very great. Like a little child, he leaned first out of one side of the carriage and then out of the other, talking to himself as if addressing the passers-by. To him, he said, I feel the attention of the people feel fixed on earthly things. They're all rushing about for the sake of their stomachs. No one is thinking about God. They arrived at the circus. <clears throat> Tickets for the cheapest seats were purchased. The devotees took the master to a high gallery, and they all sat on a bench. He said joyfully, ha, this is a good place. I can see the show well from here. There were exhibitions of various feats. A horse raced around in a circular track over which large iron rings were hung at intervals. The circus rider, an Englishwoman, stood on one foot on the horse's back, and as the horse passed under the rings, she jumped through them, always alighting on one foot on the horse's back. The horse raced around the entire circle, and the woman never missed the horse or lost her balance. When the circus was over, the master and the devotee stood outside the field near the carriage. Since it was a cold night, he covered his body with his green shawl. Shramakrishna said to M, Did you see how that Englishwoman stood on one foot on her horse while it raced like lightning? How difficult a feat that must be. She must have practiced a long time. The slightest carelessness would be break her arms or legs. She might even be killed. One faces the same difficulty leading the life of a householder. A few succeed in it through the grace of God and as a result of their spiritual practice. But most people fail. Entering the world, they become more and more involved in it. They drown in worldliness and suffer the agonies of death. A few only, like Janaka, have succeeded. Through the power of their austerity in leading us the spiritual life as householders, therefore spiritual practice is extremely necessary. Otherwise, one cannot rightly live in the world. The master got into the carriage with the devotees and went to Balaram Bose's house. He was taken with his companions to the second floor. It was evening and the lamps were lighted. The master described the feats he had seen at the circus. Gradually, other devotees gathered and soon he was engaged in spiritual talk with them. The conversation turned to the caste system. Shamakrishna said, the caste system can be removed by one means only and that is the love of God. Lovers of God do not belong to any caste. The mind, body, and soul of a person becomes purified through divine love. Chaitanya and Nityananda scattered the name of Hari to everyone, including the pariah, and embraced them all. A Brahmin without this love is no longer a Brahmin, and a pariah with the love of God is no longer a pariah. Through bhakti, an untouchable becomes pure and elevated. Speaking of householders entangled in worldliness, the master said, they're like silkworms. They can come out of the cocoon of their worldly life if they wish, but they can't bear to, for they themselves have, have built the cocoon with great love and care, so they die there. Or they're like the fish inside a trap with the other fish and hear the sweet sound of the murmuring water and forget everything else. They don't even make an effort to free themselves from the trap. The lisping of the children is the murmur of the water and the other fish, and the and the, and the other fish are relatives and friends. Only one or two make good their escape by running away. They are liberated souls. Then the master sang, When such delusion veils the world through my Mahamaya spell, that Brahma is bereft of sense and Vishnu loses consciousness, what hope is there left for men? The narrow channel first is made, and there the trap is set, but open though the passage lies. The fish... 
once safely through the gate, do not come out again. They, the silkworm patiently prepares its, its closely spun cocoon, even though a way leads forth. Encased within its own cocoon, the worm remains to die. The master continued, man may be likened to grain. He has fallen between the millstones and is about to be crushed. Only a few grains that stay near the peg escape. Therefore, people should take refuge as at the peg, that is to say, in God. Call on him, sing his name, then you will be free. Otherwise, you are going to be crushed by the king of death. The master sang again, Mother, mother, my boat is sinking here in the ocean of the world. Fiercely, the hurricane of delusion rages on every side. Clumsy is my helmsman, the mind. Stubborn, my six oarsmen, the passions. Into the pitiless wind, I sailed my boat, and now it is sinking. Split is the rudder of devotion. Tattered is the sail of faith. Into my boat, the waters are pouring. Tell me, what shall I do? For with my failing eyes, alas, nothing but darkness do I see. Here in the waves I will swim, O mother, and cling to the raft of thy name. Mr. Bishwas had been sitting in the room a long time. He now left. He had once been wealthy, but had squandered everything in an immoral life. Finally, he'd become indifferent to his wife and children. Referring to Mr. Bishwas, the master said, he is an unfortunate wretch. That's clear. Okay, he said, he, a householder has his duties to discharge, his debts to pay, his debts to the gods, his debts to his ancestors, his debt to the rishis, his debt to his wife and children. If a wife is chaste and her husband should support her, he should also bring up his children until they are of age. Only a monk must not save. The bird and the monk do not provide for the morrow. But even a bird provides when it has young. It brings food in its bill for the chicks. Balaram. Mr. Bishwas now wants to cultivate the company of holy people. Master with a smile. A monk's kamandalu, that's their little pot that goes with them everywhere, goes, goes to the eight holy places with them, but it still tastes bitter. Likewise, it is said that the Malaya breeze turns all trees into sandalwood, but there are a few exceptions, such as the cotton tree, the ashwatha, and the hog plum. Some frequent the company of holy men in order to smoke hemp. Many monks smoke it on the householders stay with them, prepare the hemp, and partake of the prasad. Thursday, November 16th, 1882. The master had come to Kolkata. In the evening, he went to the house of Raj Mohan, a member of the Brahmo Samaj, where Narendra and some of his young friends used to meet and worship according to the Brahmo ceremonies. Shama Krishna wanted to see their worship. He was accompanied by M and a few other devotees. The master was very happy to see Narendra and expe expressed a desire to watch the young men at their worship. Narendra sang and then the worship began. As one of the men conducted it, he prayed, O Lord, may we give up everything and be absorbed in thee. Possibly the youth was inspired by the master's presence and so talked of utter renunciation. Shamakrishna remarked in a whisper, much likelihood there is of that. Rajmohan served the master with refreshments. And then we move on to Sunday, November 19th, that's three days later, 1882. It was the auspicious occasion of the Jagadatri Puja, the festival of the Divine Mother. Shamakrishna was invited to surrender his house in Kolkata. At first he went to the house of Manmohan in the neighborhood. The master was seated in Manmohan's parlor. He said, God very much relishes the bhakti of the poor and the lowly, just as the cow relishes fodder mixed with oil cakes. King Duryodhana showed Krishna the splendor of his wealth and riches, but Krishna accepted the hospitality of the poor of Vidura. God is fond of his devotees. He runs after the devotee as a cow runs after his calf. The master sang, and for that love, the mighty yogis practice yoga from age to age. When love awakes, the Lord, like a magnet, draws to him the soul. Then he, used, then he said, Chaitanya used to shed tears of joy at the very mention of Krishna's name. God alone is the real substance. All else is illusory. Man can realize God if he wants to, 
but he madly craves the enjoyment of lust and greed. A snake has a precious stone in its head. That's that little mark that snakes have. They, they, call, they think it's a precious jewel or something. It was just a mark anyway. But it is perfectly satisfied to eat a mere frog. Bhakti is the one essential thing. Who can ever know God through reasoning? I want love of God. What do I care about knowing his infinite glories? One bottle of wine makes me drunk. What do I care about knowing how many gallons there are in the grog shop? One jar, of a wa one jar of water is enough to quench my thirst. I don't need to know the amount of water there is on the earth. Shama Krishna arrived at Surrender's house. Many devotees had assembled there, including Surrender's elder brother, who was a judge. Master to Surrender's brother, you are a judge, that is very good. But remember, everything happens through God's power. It is he who has given you your high position. That is how you became a judge. People think that it is they who are great. The water from a roof throws through a spout that is shaped like a lion's head. But it looks as if the lion were bringing the water out through its mouth. But look at the source of the water. A cloud gathers in the sky and the rain falls on the roof and then the water flows through the pipe and at last goes through the spout. Surrender's brother. The Brahmo Samaj preaches the freedom of women and the abolition of the caste system. What do you think about these matters? Master. Men feel that way when they are just beginning to develop spiritual yearning. A storm raises clouds of dust and one cannot distinguish between the different trees, the mango, the hog plum, and the tamarind. But after the storm blows over, one sees clearly. After the first storm of divine passion is quelled, one gradually understands that God alone is the highest good, the eternal substance, and that all else is transitory. One cannot grasp this without tapasya, spiritual practice, and the company of holy people. What is the use of merely reciting the written parts of the drum? There, when there's a, a drum part like a tabla, there's a written part that goes with it, like ta da dicky dicky tim tum dum dum da 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 tick tick, and tabla players will recite it as they're playing. So his illustration is that if you just stand there and say ta ta tiki tiki tum tum, you don't hear this. You're not going to hear the drum. Similarly, it's very difficult. He said to put into practice. Of, he said it's very difficult to put them into practice on the instrument. What can be accomplished by a mere lecture? It is austerity that is necessary. By that alone, one can comprehend. You asked about caste distinctions. There is only one way to remove them, and that's by love of God. Lovers of God have no caste. Through this divine love, the untouchable becomes pure. The pariah no longer remains a pariah. Chaitanya embraced all, including the pariahs. The members of the Brahmo Samaj sing the name of Hari. That is very good. Through earnest prayer, one receives the grace of God and realizes him. God can be realized by means of all paths. The same God is invoked by different names. Surrender's brother. Sir, what do you think of theosophy? Master. I have heard that man can acquire superhuman powers through it and perform miracles. I saw a man who had brought a ghost under his control. The ghost used to procure various things for its master. What shall I do with superhuman powers? Can one realize God through them? If God is not realized then everything becomes false. And then we move on to the next day. And meanwhile, are there any questions about anything in any of these readings? Anything that anyone wants to discuss? The getting a ghost under your control through psychic powers, maybe? No? Okay. Not my strong point either. Okay. November 1882. It was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon when Sri Ramakrishna arrived in Calcutta to attend the annual festival of the Brahmo Samaj, which was to be celebrated at Manila Malik's house. Besides M and other devotees, the master, Vijay Goswami, and a number of Brahmos were present. Elaborate arrangements had been made to make the occasion a success. Vijay was to conduct the worship. The Katak, that's a professional reciter of epics, like the Ramayana or the Mahabharata. Generally, a Katak recites them either the Ramayana or the Devi Mahatmyam, the Chandi, uh, the Divine Mother, that sort of thing. 
The Mahabharata is so long, someone would die trying to repeat the whole thing. So anyway, that's what a Kathak is. The Kathak recited the life of Prahlada from the Purana. Its substance was as follows. Hiran Hiran Hiranya Kashipu, Prahlada's father, was the king of the demons. He bore great malice toward God and put his own son through endless tortures for leading a religious life. Afflicted by his father, Prahlada prayed to God, O oh God, please give my father holy inclinations. At these words, the master wept. He went into an ecstatic mood. Afterwards, he began to talk to the devotees. Master, bhakti is the only essential thing. One obtains love for God by constantly chanting his name and singing his glories. Ah, what a devotee Shivanath is. He is soaked in the love of God like cheesecake and syrup. One should not think my religion alone is the right path and other religions are false. God can be realized by means of all paths. It is enough to have sincere yearning for God. Infinite are the paths and infinite the opinions. Let me tell you one thing. God can be seen. The Vedas say that God is beyond mind and speech. The meaning of this is that God is unknown to the mind attached to worldly objects. Vaishnavacharam used to say, God is known by the mind and intellect that are pure. Therefore, it is necessary to seek the company of holy people, practice prayer, and listen to the instruction of the guru. These purify the mind. Then one sees God. Dirt can be removed from water by a purifying agent. Then one sees one reflection, one's reflection in it. One cannot see one's face in a mirror if the mirror is covered with dirt. After the purification of the heart, one obtains divine love. Then one sees God through his grace. One can teach others if one receives the command from God after seeing him. Before that, one should not lecture. There's a song that says, you have, not set, up, you have set up no image here within the shrine, O fool. Blowing the conch, you simply make confusion worse confounded. You should first cleanse the shrine of your heart. Then you should install the deity and arrange worship. As yet, nothing has been done. What do you achieve by blowing the conch shell? That's during a, during a temple service, they get out of conch and woo, makes this very, very loud noise. And simply making a loud noise. Vichai sat on a raised stool and conducted the worship according to the rules of the Brahmo Samaj. Afterwards, he sat by the master, Master de Vijay. Will you tell me one thing? Why do you harp so much on sin? By repeating it a hundred times, I'm a sinner, one verily becomes a sinner. One should have such faith as to be able to say, what? I have taken the name of God. How can I be a sinner? God is our father and mother. Tell him, oh Lord, I have committed sins, but I won't repeat them. Chant his name and purify your body and mind. Purify your tongue by singing God's holy name. And we'll go on to December 1882. In the afternoon, Sri Ramakrishna was seated on the west porch of the room in the temple garden at Dakshineshwar. Among others, Babaram, Ramdayal, and M were present. These three were going to spend the night with the master. Am intended to stay the following night also for, having, for he was having his Christmas holidays. Babaram had only recently begun to visit the master, master to the devotees. A man becomes liberated even in this life when he knows that God is the doer of all things. Once Keshab came here with Shambhu Malak, I said to him, not even a leaf moves except by the will of God. Where is man's free will? All are under this. Uh, all are under the will of God. Nangta, that was his um, guru who taught non-dualism. Nangta was a person of great knowledge. Yet even he was about to drown himself in the Ganges. He stayed here eleven months. At one time, he he suffered from stomach trouble. The excruciating pain made him lose control over himself, and he wanted to drown himself in the river. There was a long shoal in the bathing cot. However far he went into the river, he couldn't find water above his knees. Then he understood everything. That means he realized he wasn't even free to kill himself. He didn't even have the power to kill himself. 
and he came back. One time I was very ill and was about ready to cr cut my throat with a knife. Therefore I say, O oh mother, I'm the machine and thou art the operator. I'm the chariot and thou art the driver. I move as thou movest me. I do as thou makest me do. The devotee sang kirtan in the master's room. Dwell, O oh Lord, O oh lover of Pakti, in the Brindaban of my heart, and my, and my devotion unto thee will be thy Radha, dearly loved. My body will be Nanda's home. My tenderness will be Yashoda. My longing for deliverance will be thy gentle gopi maids. Lift the Govardhan of my sin and slay my six unyielding passions, fierce as the demon sent by Kamsa. Sweetly play the flute of thy grace, charming the milk cow of my mind. Abide in the pasture of my soul. Dwell by the Jamuna of my yearning, under the banyan of my hope, forever gracious to thy servant, and, if not but the cowherd's love, can hold thee in Brindaban's vale. Then, Lord, let Dasharati too become thy cowherd and thy slave. Again they sang, Sing, O bird, that nestles deep within my heart. Sing, O bird, that sits on the kalpa tree of Brahman. Sing, O God's everlasting praise. Taste, O bird, the four fruits of the kalpa tree. Dharma, Arta, Kama, and Moksha. That's righteousness, uh, wealth, desire, or, and freedom. Sing, O bird, he alone is the comfort of my soul. Sing, O bird, he alone is my life's enduring joy. O thou wondrous bird of my life, sing aloud in my heart. Unceasingly sing, O bird, sing forevermore, even as the thirsty chatak sings for that raindrop from the cloud. And I think that is a good place to stop. Are there any questions? Yeah, Cece. He was saying that a person who calls himself a sinner repeatedly tells himself they're a sinner becomes a sinner because as you think, so you become. Yes. Yes. So rather, he said, rather than thinking you're a sinner, just say, yes, I did that, but I won't do it again. Yes. Just make a resolution not to do it again. Just like you did it, I'm going to resolve not to do that again. And, and don't go back and kind of drive it into your mind. Because the more we drive negative thoughts into our mind, the more likely we're, that we're going to repeat them. Yeah. Good positive thinking. All right. Any questions from Davy Prana? You doing all right? Can't hear you, babe. Can you turn on your audio? From our revered nun? Hmm. Uh, I'm not getting it. Dirk is going to go upstairs so we can hear how how life is for our senior nun, Davy Prana, there. Are we getting you? Is your audio on, Davy Prana? Is your speaker on? I can't hear you either, Sarah. Something's happening. We can hear now, but I can't hear you. Oh, you can hear Davy Prana, but I can't. Is that the deal? Yeah, they can hear her, but you can't. Because it looks like our Wah. thing got unplugged and they did a rebuttal. Okay. Well, Davy Prana, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Sarah. I can't hear you, Amrita. I'm just going to assume, David, that you're blessing us all over there, okay? And on behalf of y'all, I'm going to sing. <laughs> Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu Thank you, everybody, for coming. Ooh, don't leave. Tomorrow, there'll be a very fine lecture by Swami Arupeshananda, who is really good. 
uh, despite his bizarre topic of blob yoga. I have no idea what that means, and I feel very sorry for Jaunty, who has to sing a song about whatever the lecture is. So good luck with that. Uh, Wednesday, do not forget we have Swami Sarva Priyananda here on Wednesday between 5 and 6. He'll be giving a talk on what else? Non-dual spirituality. And we will, of course, be, um, you can check in on that YouTube. All local people, you're very, very welcome to come, followed by a potluck. You're very welcome to be here for that. Uh, the class will be on 5. It'll be over by 6. Then we'll have a uh, RT at 6. And then by 6.30, we'll go down for a potluck. So now I can hear somebody. So uh, please come if you can. And Do we bring yeah, if you want to eat, it's always good to bring something. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Wednesday. Right? And that is Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, please come, Cece. Please come. Okay, well, we'll see you all uh, later. Okay, bye, Gemma. Gemma.